Hello everybody, welcome to Catherine Sews. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm kind of excited today because I went thrift shopping and I found this jacket, this kind of sweet little Tweety jacket. It was priced at $8, but it was on the half price rack. So it was $4, that's a score. Now, it definitely needs some fixing up. You'll see right away, the shoulders are really big in terms of the size, like my shoulders actually ending in here, but also big with shoulder pads. So that's gotta be changed. It's also big through the body. Not too bad though, I'll be able to easily take that in, but the main problem right now is the shoulders. The sleeves are a little on the long side, but I'm thinking once I take up that shoulder, the sleeve is fine. And it has some nice little details on it. So I like this little tab that's set right into the cuff with the black button. I'm gonna definitely keep that little tab on the sleeve. The same little tab set into the top of the pocket. So I like that too. But what I think I'm gonna do is transform this into more of like a Chanel style jacket. What I might do is get rid of the collar, turn it into like that round neck, like a Chanel style, add some of the black trim, and then I think I'll have a sweet little jacket. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove the sleeve remove that shoulder pad, get right in there, and then I'll be able to do some proper fitting around the body and around the armhole. I think this will be a fun project. I'm glad you're here along for the ride, so let's jump right in. When the jacket is closed at the bottom like that, look inside the sleeve of any jacket like this, and one of the sleeves is going to have a little secret entrance. There it is. Do you see how that edge is stitched closed? That's your best way into a sleeve. That's the last thing they close up when they're making this jacket. So there's our way in. So the lining is just attached roughly. The shoulder pad, also just a few like hand stitches. And then this is called the sleeve head that supports the top of the sleeve. So here I'm unpicking the sleeve and the sleeve head at the same time. Okay, I'm just gonna take off both sleeves and then I'll do some fitting on the body. I'll show you that part. Okay, so the sleeves are off. It didn't take too long, it wasn't too bad. And now I wanna deal with the neckline and the body. Sometimes Chanel jackets have a little collar, but I think I'm just gonna do the round neck. So I've got my erasable friction pen. I'll kind of come like that and like that. It's a very messy line, but I'll clean it up once I take it off. So that's gonna be off. I do kind of like this little collar standing up, but I will get very hot. I think I'm just gonna stick with the round neck. I, <laughs> I think I'm gonna lift up the whole body. I know that looks kind of funny, but bear with me. I think I'm gonna lift up the whole body. And then once I kind of pick it up, then I'll be able to take in the sides to make that fit a little bit better. So I'll take it off, cut off the neckline, try pinning in the shoulders, and I'll show you along the way. And I've got it pinned in half so that the two sides end up being perfectly symmetrical. I was able to pin up like a good chunk here, almost two inches anyway. I drew a new line for the neckline, even around the back, because of course the back is coming up really high now. So I drew a little bit of a line there as well. Okay, so now dealing with the body. Wherever there is a seam, I'm just gonna pin in the amount that makes it fit nicely but I don't want this to be super fitted. The Chanel style is meant to be that boxy, kind of more like a cardigan fit. So I just want to pin in enough that it doesn't look like I'm wearing my grandma's jacket. <laughs> Even some down the back. It's not that easy to pin down your own center back. <laughs> We're getting there, I think, I, I, I think it's gonna be okay. It's gonna get better from here. So with it off, I kind of made sure that both sides were the same. And I think what I'm gonna do is mark these pins with my marker, and then I'll have to unpin, just because I have to flip it to the inside. When you are pinning to take something in, make sure you pin where you wanna taper off too, so that you're not leaving the end of it to, to guesswork. You wanna know exactly where you're coming in and where you're tapering it off. Okay, so with everything marked, now I can take the pins out. So you can see how much I'm taking out of the shoulder and a little bit out of the front princess seam and quite a bit out of the center back too. So I've pinned my shoulders together right in line with where I had put the purple markings. And whatever I do to the outer fabric, I'm gonna have to do to the lining as well. 
So I'm just going to sew that seam. I'm not going to cut anything yet. I'm not worried that the neck edges aren't going to line up anymore because I have to cut the back neck down anyway, so that's going to be just fine. That's pretty nice, right? Okay. So now the same amount that I took up here, I have to take up in the lining. I'll sew both shoulder seams like that. And then whatever I do to the outer fabric, I have to do the same thing to the lining. I'm not gonna cut that till I do the next fitting. So now next thing is the princess seams. So I've got these purple marks where my pins were. I'll go from the inside and bring those together. Now here, the plaid was not matching. So instead of just sewing that like that, I'm going to actually open that seam and see if I can get the wiggle room to match the plaid. On a seam like this that's nicely pressed open and flat, I'm going to just make a little opening, turn the ball of my seam ripper down, and just gently push. This is a really good seam ripper, this clover one. I love it. It's nice and sharp like that. If your seam ripper can't do that, time for a new seam ripper. So now when I look inside, bring my purple lines together and bring my horizontal plaid lines together and lots of pinning. And I want to pin on that purple line. And I'll be sewing just from pin to pin. I'm comparing the seam that I just took in to the lining to make sure I'm taking in the lining approximately the same amount and then again I'll just sew from pin to pin on the lining and then after I get this fitting on the body done I'll try it on again okay I think the fit feels a lot better it feels like it actually like could be my garment instead of like my grandmother's garment the back I think is sitting nicely but everything is very high up I think there we coming in a bit on the shoulder as well. Seems okay. And then the sleeves will be going back on. Wrong sleeve. <laughs> the sleeves will be going back on and I have to decide if I want to take it three quarters. I think I do. Don't you think? That's gonna be a whole other thing. So the whole jacket body is inside out and now it's time for me to finally cut off the extra because I'm quite happy with the fit. So now I've got my markings here of how low I want to drop the neck. So that's my replacement button. But here, of course, I need to have the exact same placement, right? I can't kind of do that. That would be really funny looking. So from this one, my next button would be there. This would be my buttonhole right there. I think that'll be fine. If I sew on the green line, if I'm sewing there, I'm going to cut here. Chopping up a jacket like this is not for the faint of heart. But you know what? What did it cost me? Four dollars. So, you know, all I'm losing is my time if this does not work in my video. <laughs> so I'm going to be cutting here and also down in the back of it. Oh, I did spend some time kind of hand sewing because this flared out a bit for the lapel here. So I did spend some time trying to get that in a straight line. So when I'm cutting here, I want to start at a right angle to the seam. I don't want to have an, a V or a point. So starting at a right angle and finishing at a right angle. And now the armholes. I haven't got in to press these seams yet, so I'm kind of just finger pressing them open. And then I think I'm going to pin two armholes together, same at the bottom of the armhole, all the seams stacked so I know I'm kind of more or less lined up and symmetrical. So I'm not taking off a ton on the armhole. Where I was drawing with the green, that would be my sewing line. So my cutting line would be just a little bit in from there, blending into the armhole there. Be fine. So with the extra all trimmed off now I can get in to press those seams flat and I'm making sure to put it gently over the ironing board and not um, not stretch it out at all. 
and this is also erasing all of my lines so I I needed to do all that trimming first before I could press or else I'd lose all my lines okay to stay stitch I'm gonna start at the center back and come around and then center back and go around the other side and the purpose of a stay stitch is to make sure this isn't stretching out and since I'll be kind of working through this neck opening to set the sleeve it probably will stretch out especially on this loose weave it's going to stay stitch that like it's just through a single layer just to kind of keep it in its shape and then again from the center back around to the other side okay i have opened up the sleeve on the back seam this is the back seam i've opened up the sleeve and the lining so that i can kind of lay this flat ish I do want to take this down to being a three-quarter length sleeve so I'm taking off four and a half inches off the cap of the sleeve the height of the sleeve and moving the whole sleeve up I'm a little worried about the lack you know about taking away some of the ease of movement around the elbow so what I'm going to do to compensate a little is instead of taking four and a half off off of this under seam the front seam I'll just take off three and a half there and we'll just see something is just telling me that that might you know having that little extra length in that front sleeve might give me that ease of movement with it just as flat as I can three and a half there I've measured four and a half here that is a lot and <laughs> I'm scared it's a lot right <sighs> when you're shortening a sleeve a sleeve from the top like this it's you don't just take off your whole amount all the way around, right? Your sleeve would get way too skinny in here. We don't want to take so much off the width. I want to have this same shape. So if I can use it as a pattern, that should do. I'm going to draw it on the lining. Whatever I'm taking here, three and a half inches, I'll need to do here as well because this has to connect back to that. Okay, so now to cut that, I'm going to pin both layers together. So I'm trying to keep all my layers smooth. There we go. There's no turning back now. You'll notice I'm cutting a bit bigger than my line just because I'm scared. Okay, so that's what I took off and you'll see it gets big and then skinny and bigger. So now I'll close up these seams again, trying to match the plaid back how it was. And then I'll be able to set the sleeve. So the sleeves are closed up, ready to be set. There's still a lot of ease in the cap, meaning that the, the top of the sleeve is bigger than the armhole. So I'm going to sew in an easy stitch so that all that means is I'm switching to my longest stitch length and just sewing on the single layer no back tacks all around the top half of the circle of the sleeve and then don't cut your thread short leave your tails a thread so that you can use that thread to ease in the top of the sleeve so that's going to ease in like that. I'm not pulling the thread. I'm just holding the thread steady and shuffling the fabric along it so that it kind of just compresses the whole top edge there. And I don't need to do a lot of it. Now I'll do most of the easing as I'm pinning the sleeve into the jacket. I'm pinned all the way around. I like to have the sleeve facing up. So the whole circle of the sleeve is facing up instead of being down like this. I want to see where I have to ease. And I'm starting at the lowest point, like at the bottom or the side seam of the jacket here, but with the sleeve side facing up. And you could definitely use your same long stitch length to base this in, check it, make sure you're good. But I'm just gonna go for it here. Making sure my seams stay open and flat. I don't want them to get flipped over and cause a little lump. You don't put ease at the bottom of the sleeve, like under the arm. It's all on top of the shoulder. All of this extra fabric is at the top of the sleeve. And on this loose open weave, it's really nice. Like it's just compacting in so easily for me here. It's really a pleasure. So don't let any little puckers get in there. 
edges together, flatten out each section. So I'll do the same to the lining now. So now same thing to the lining and I just need to make sure that the lining is not twisted. I'm going to tuck in both edges of the seam allowance and reach in through the neck and grab those. So I'm going to hold on there and then flip so I can get it all inside out. If that seems to be matching okay. So I'll be pinning around this circle, but this is a slightly different story. Can't get the whole sleeve inside to make them both right sides together. So I'm going to be sewing around this circle. It's going to be a little visually confusing. You know, this is attached there, so I can't put it in, if you get what I'm saying. That's the side seam. I want to find the low point of the sleeve there. A little cuckoo, but it'll be, it'll be fine. Don't worry. On the lining, I don't worry so much about like putting in an easing stitch and easing it in and avoiding puckers. In fact, if there is extra at the top, I'm just going to pleat it in and that's fine for the lining. So I'm just going to end up with one little pleat like this right at the top of the sleeve and that is a hundred percent fine. So I'll pin both sleeves like that and then sew both. Okay, so you can see that even though this circle is going in, to, in there, um, I'm still going to be able to make my way around it with no problem. It's just visually confusing. I'll sew the other sleeve like that. So sleeves are in. We're looking super sweet here. And so all that's really left to do is close up the neck and apply the trim. And now I'm debating, like, that's totally going to change the look. That was my intention right from the start, though, is to do that Chanel style trim all down the front and even like around the pockets. I think it'll be good stuff. <laughs> I'm hesitant, though, because I'm liking it as is. But anyway, we'll see. You can see how that pleat is functioning, like the extra, I just folded it in. And so now there's quite like a luxurious looking pleat there, which gives a lot of comfort down the back. Now, do you remember we talked about at the beginning, your secret entryway. So you have to find it on your sleeve again. There it is. There's my secret entrance. And I'm going to reach in and grab two edges of my seam allowance, tuck it in like that. I'm going to hold that and pull it through this sleeve entryway. I haven't let go of these two seams. If I let go of them, I have to start over and place them all back together. But I'm going to stick a pin in there. Okay. And then, so it's like you're pulling as much as you can through that opening just to bring the neckline together. And also, do you remember I said that like I'm taking off the little flare of where the lapel had originally been. And so that's, I'm going to sew around the neck and then a little bit down into that center front. Now there's a button there, right? There's a button right here. So I can't get down as far as I would like. I could obviously remove that button, but the other side has a button hole. So it does me not too much good to just do one and not the other, but I'll come down as far as I can. Easy to get lost in here, but just keep your same two edges together and pulling more out through that sleeve opening. And it's always good to pin your matching points first. So seams and corners and then pin in between. There's where my buttonhole is that's preventing me from getting down into this lapel. And so this is just me still like getting rid of that flare of the lapel. I was just sewing that whole neckline together. All right, before I turn it right side out, I'm going to cut off the extra fabric around the corners clipping into this seam to make sure that can spread out around. I am just a little hesitant though because of that loose weave, but I guess it'll be fine. 
So now I can pull it all back out through that sleeve opening and voila, those corners should be able to poke out nice and pointy. I'm going to use my closed up scissors gently because of that open weave. I could easily like jam those right through so gently I'll poke out that corner. Okay, so the neck is all sewn and clipped and turned. And so don't freak out if your neck looks like this, like it's not beautiful yet. But all we're gonna do to tame this is understitch. And what understitching is, is that I'll be sewing close to the edge here of the lining through this layer, but also through the seam allowance that, that I'm gonna be pushing this way. And then I'll sew close to this edge that'll give a nice, nice edge to the whole neckline. Normally, understitching is easy-ish, but this is a bit tricky because uh, I have to do it all through this opening in the sleeve. So that's not a huge amount of fun, <laughs> as you can imagine. So I'm gonna have to have it on the machine like this with this opening at the bottom, and I'll just be working my way along like that making sure that that opening stays around the needle and so I'm not sewing the lining closed in a weird way. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, it's awkward. We'll try. So there's my opening. So that opening is facing down. Here's my neck edge. Inside, I have to push the seam allowance toward the facing and lining and then sew close to that edge. And that's gonna make a big, big difference to how that neckline lies. I'll be peeking underneath a lot to make sure my opening is still around where the needle is going to be. I'll be able to feel that my seam allowance is going out toward the facing. And then I'm aiming my needle just to be like an eighth of an inch or less, like two or three millimeters to the lining side of that seam. Very fiddly. So after checking that the bottom layer is looking good then on the top layer I really want to open it out like this I don't want to sew a little ridge in there I want to open that right out flat if the seam allowance flips toward the body it's going to give me a really funny looking lump there on my neck edge a little at a time arrange organize check 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 and go so even before I've taken it to the iron now, you can see that, that lining is being kind of held toward the inside and it's not wanting to roll out to the outside. It's giving me a nice edge around the neck. Love it, looking good. And now I just need to add one more buttonhole at the top. It has to be the exact same spacing or it's gonna look really funny. Even if it's off by just a little bit, it'll look funny. The original buttonholes are four and an eighth apart. I think that'll be perfect. So there's my replacement button. With little scissors, snip across. And then I decided I needed another buttonhole at the bottom. So another four and an eighth below the last one. And then of course I wanted all five buttons that are going down the front to be exactly the same. So I cut off the two buttons from the cuffs added those to the front and then replaced the ones on the cuff. Using a quadruple thread, I sewed back on all four buttons. Luckily, I found two buttons in my stash that are very close. Nobody will ever notice. You can use a darning needle as a spacer because the fabric is thick that has to sit under that button. So a darning needle or a toothpick, something like that to just create a bit of extra space. If you're not sure about all these little details that make your buttons look so professional, check out this old video of mine about how to sew a button like a pro. Looks good on the outside, looks great on the inside too. Okay, so now at this point I could call it done. It's more of the Chanel shape, I still have the cute little cuff and the cute little button on the pocket detail, but it's not there yet. I just, it doesn't feel like me yet. And I still did want to have the Chanel style trim. So I was playing around with this and the contrast was just too sharp. And I just didn't like it, honestly. I just was kind of disappointed when I started putting the trim on. I just didn't love it. And so that one was too contrasty. And so then I found a light colored one. 
that was even worse. I didn't like that. So I took a break because I was sad and frustrated and didn't know what to do. And it just, this just doesn't feel like me. It just feels too conservative. And I wanted it just a little more DIY feeling, a little like with just a little bit of an edge or a twist to it. And so I, I kind of had a weird idea, but I've been playing around with it. And I think I love it. I'm actually going to take a Sharpie to it. I know this sounds crazy. So I, I played around with the Sharpie on just the little bits of scrap. I kind of fell in love with it. it. Like, I actually really love it. That is so cute, right? Like, oh, I love it. Okay, I'm doing it. I spent $15 on this tram. <laughs> uh, but the Sharpie, I think it's super cute and it's really different. It's going to be faster than trying to get that trim all on, all perfect. And it's something different and fun. That's about as DIY as it gets, I think. I'm gonna jump in. There's no turning back after I put that first dot of Sharpie on it. I sewed a line around the whole perimeter, um, kind of almost just like drawing a guideline for myself. I'm using the edge of the bobbin button as a guide. There's nothing stopping me now <laughs> except for fear. Even, like, I paid $4 for this jacket, right? But I like it. I don't want to wreck it. I'll just start. Ah. Really, the worst thing that can happen is that I'll be out $4 and a bunch of time and video. Oh, yes. My fear is gone. I already love it. You know that feeling when you first fall in love? <laughs> yep, I'm having that right now. And then the last bit is on the cuffs. Yay! Okay, so there it is. I, I'm just over the moon about that little Sharpie technique. <laughs> it was super fun to do. And it looks kind of like it's knitted right in or woven right in. It's really just subtle and cute and fun. I will definitely be wearing this jacket to work and even out for dinner. It's more like a DIY and it just feels more like me. I just, I love it. It was great to have you on board and I hope you enjoyed watching the process. Thanks so much for joining me today. And until next time on Catherine Sews, you take care.